fossils of human ancestors are rare. You could easily fit all that scientists have found in the back of one pickup truck. Wait a minute. Did she just say that you could easily fit everything that scientists have found of fossilized human, human remains in the back of one pickup truck? What happened to all of these fossils that prove human lineage? This is a fascinating admission. You know, NPR must think that only their ditto heads listen to their show and nobody else. Because this episode on All Things Considered just destroys the theory of evolution completely and actually confirms the Bible's model. Let's carry on here, shall we? But a remarkable site in Georgia, in the former Soviet Union, has produced a cornucopia of bones dating back almost two million years. As NPR's Christopher Joyce reports, scientists are excited and a bit puzzled by what they've uncovered there. The fossil hunters found the cache of bones over a decade ago in a place called Dimonisi. The team kept most of it under wraps. Now they've lifted the veil. Well, they've kept it under wraps, folks, because, <laughs> because it destroys everything that they've been teaching the world in their textbooks. It destroys it all. This is, an enor this is a huge story coming out of NPR News today. They kept it under wraps for 10 years. They hid this evidence for biblical creation, for the Genesis account. They've kept it all hidden for 10 years. This is more evidence that they are doing, they are, they are suppressing evidence that, that slams the atheistic creation myth of evolution. Let's hear the rest of this thing now. What they've got are the fossil remains of five creatures who lived 1.8 million years ago, including a magnificent adult male skull. William Jungers, a professor of anatomy at Stony Brook University in Long Island, is impressed. That skull is incredible. It's got to be one of the most complete uh, skulls ever discovered in the fossil record of human evolution. And they've got bones from five individuals. Team member Marcia Ponce de Leon of the Anthropological Institute in Switzerland says that's unique this far back in time. For the first time, we can see a population we only had individuals before. Having a population means scientists could look for similarities in the bones that would characterize what this species was like. What puzzled the scientists were the big differences, though, in the bones. There was a lot of variety, almost a grab bag of features. Small brain case, big protruding jaw, giant teeth. They looked like a mix of species. But Ponce de Leon's colleague, Christophe Zolificker, notes that all five apparently died within centuries of each other in the same place. So we are pretty sure that the variation that we see is that within the species, a single evolving lineage. So, okay, they found a human ancestral species with a lot of physical variety from one individual to the next. But this poses a problem. The conventional wisdom on early human evolution is that there were several species that arose in Africa. Homo habilis, Homo rudolfensis, Homo erectus, maybe even more. But this new discovery suggests that a single species, like the Demonisi 5, can have a lot of physical variety. And that means, says Olificar, maybe there weren't numerous early human species. There was just one and there it is there it is there was just one species not many which evolved from multiple lineages from around the world in, in the African area just one folks just one here's the evidence coming straight from the evolutionist community themselves I'm you, Lord. And it's been suppressed for 10 years. Man, you guys need to spread this around. Of course, we're all going to be told, well, you just don't understand the evidence. Excuse me. Excuse me. This is it, man. This is it. You guys need to re-examine this stuff. If you're atheists and evolutionists listening to, the, to me talk, you have got to really take a serious look at the Genesis account. Maybe it will help you to watch the Genesis movie coming out of, uh, we've been talking about it, um, Genesis 3D, Eric Hoven's movie. You guys got to watch that. My name is Mike Shoesmith. I guess we might as well listen to the minute or so that's left in this uh, uh, All Things Considered show. We'll talk to you guys next time.
you know, I think that there, there are going to be people who won't like this. Those people, says William Youngers at Stony Brook, have argued that there were lots of sibling species of early humans that popped up independently in Africa, Asia, and Europe, only to die out. They were stages or experiments in human evolution. The new research suggests a different narrative. There may have been one very successful species that emerges from Africa subsequently and rapidly spreads to Southeast Asia. That's a, a, the, the picture of a very successful cosmopolitan species. Like most new ideas on human evolution, this one has skeptics. Brian Richmond is an anthropologist at George Washington University. Richmond says the techniques used in this new research gloss over the true amount of variation among those earliest African fossils. It doesn't get at the more fine-grained um, aspects of anatomy that actually distinguish species from one another. It's a little bit like using a telescope, when in this case they need a magnifying glass. Richmond says the discovery, published in the journal Science, is nonetheless a treasure of new data for scientists to ponder and to argue about. Christopher Joyce and Paragraphs.